camera is ready. Good morning. Welcome to Keystone Powerhouse Ministries. I'm Pastor Mike and we're inviting you to just join in with us with, in our service today. But we're going to open up in a word of prayer uh, as we uh, start this service today. Father, we just thank you that we have this time of fellowship yes. to come in together, Lord, into this place, morning, Lord, and to continue welcome. doing your welcome work, Lord. Spirit. And we just thank you. For your goodness we thank you for what you're doing lord we thank you for your mercy and your grace lord and for god just being all powerful all knowing and being everywhere at one time god because you are here just as well as you are with any other service god and we just lift you up lord and let us lift up the name of jesus lord to draw men to you and father we just give you all praise and glory because it belongs to you in jesus name Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah. This is going to be a good service today. Uh, join in with us. We're going to sing a, a, a couple hymns and a couple choruses, and uh, we're just going to have a good time in the Lord today. Amen. Are you washed in the blood? <coughs> have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? if you all have a song book. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. He set me free. What's like a bird in prison I dwell
Well, praise the Lord. Was that a fast one? Yeah. Speeding up. It got good to you, didn't it, Mike? <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, those old hymns. I don't let grass grow under my tires. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Um, uh, uh, Sister Otter, do you have an offering message today, or do you want us to just invite people to give? Well, actually, I was just going to speak a prayer of blessing. Okay. Come on now. Amen. Amen. I'm going to trade you seats for a minute. And speak loud and proud. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, a lot of times, I don't think that we speak enough blessing to each other and over each other. And our words is what releases things. And I just want to speak blessings over the church and over everyone that is to give. Because that's what God wants to do. He wants to bless you as you give. Yes. He wants Amen. you to be blessed. Hallelujah. Because the more you're blessed, the more you can give back. And the more that you can give back, the more that comes back, I don't want this to sound like it's just to come back to the church, but our purpose is to That's be able to fund those things that God wants us to do. Because we're here on earth, and that's what, that's how this world works, is monetary, uh, you know, purposes, and that's how you can get stuff done. <laughs> and God wants us to use our offerings and the ties or the to go to go out and not just set in the walls but to be able to go out and bless those outside of the walls of the church and bring them in yeah because how did you hear about church unless someone went out and said hey come with me mm -hmm. or hey you know what i'm going to tell you something i've been so blessed let me just let me tell you what god's done for me and just your personal testimony. And God wants us to go out into the highways and the byways and to bring them in. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessings over each and every one that is here today. Yes. Father, I speak showers of love, blessings of love, where love overflows through their spirit and their hearts, Father. Lord, bless them with favor father Praise. father that they go out lord and people see the favor of god on their life father father i speak honor over them jesus Praise god. father i speak life over them father thank you jesus lord that they see your life and it on these people father and it draws them to to you father Hallelujah. Lord, I speak over each and every one, Lord Jesus, financial gain, Lord Jesus. Praise. Financial favor right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. For this current economy will not bring us down and it will not take us. For we are overcomers in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we will be a light to show that just because this economy isn't too good, that you have favor over us and our finances, and that you cover us and you protect us with your blood. And that they'll see that because of you, Lord Jesus, we are head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are blessed going in and we are blessed coming out. Father, I speak showers of protection lord jesus father i speak blessings of lord jesus of just increase in their life over their work over their home and over their family father i speak your love and your mercy upon us jesus Father, I speak healings, blessings of healing 
of walking in health. Father, that and protection, Lord. Father, that they see, that other people see the increase in every area of our lives. I speak increase spiritually, physically, and mentally in the name of Jesus. I speak strength, blessings, Lord Jesus. Father, I just speak you over us, Jesus, and for our children in the name of Jesus. Father, I also ask that you give us the words to have to speak to our family in love. Father, to help. Yes. Lord Jesus, bring them to you, Jesus. Get Help us to be the workers of the harvest of the field, Father. Use us, Father, to be those workers, Jesus. Not just to rely on everyone else, but, Father, help us to be that worker. Give us those words to say. Or even, Father, just let us be kind. Just in our kindness, Father, let us show your light and give us the understanding of your word to go forth, Jesus, outside of these walls. Because, Father, it's your word that sets them free. And, Holy Spirit, we ask, I ask that you just give boldness, Lord Jesus. Father, change our lives today as we live, live, leave today, Lord Jesus, that we live, we leave different. We leave stronger. We leave with boldness and courage and with wisdom, Father. I speak wisdom, blessings of wisdom in the name of Jesus. I speak blessings of knowledge in the name of Jesus. Yes. And Father, remove those blinders that Satan tries to put on our eyes and our ears and our hearts, Father, that will try to deceive us. I rebuke Satan's plans against this church. For we will go forth unto your, your this world, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus, and spread your gospel for your kingdom. Hallelujah. We will be warriors and generals in your army, Father. That it's not just here, but it's wherever we go, Lord. For time is short, Father. And there's so many things going on. I rebuke the confusion and the fear and the doubt. Because you're not a God of confusion. Father, I just give you the glory and the honor for it, Jesus. And Father, bless your people as they give. Father, as they give in honor of you, Jesus. And for your kingdom, Father. We bless you, Jesus, and we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A prayer of blessing over the people of God. Amen. And if you'd like to give today, you're sure welcome to do so. Uh, there'll be information in the description of the video of, of how to go about uh, getting that to us. Um, you can make checks out to KPM. That stands for Keystone Powerhouse Ministries. And... Um, also include your name, your address, and such if you're mailing cash or anything like that. So we'll know how who to credit that to uh, at the end of the year. Hallelujah! But it's important to give and to continue uh, the ministry. Amen. We are meeting in in the home as of right now. Um, some circumstances arose where why we're not in the location where we had been. Um, but it's not because of money. 
Amen. We, we had plenty of money to rent the facility, but um, anyway, we're not there, at least not at this time. Not saying we won't go back at some point in the future, but uh, we're, we're looking for a place. Amen. And trust in God because he's going to bring us into the place that he has us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just sing. Uh, uh, what was that song? Uh, uh, yeah, let's just praise the Lord. Let's just pray. Thank you. 
Jesus. For your blood that flows through our veins, Jesus. Yes. For oh, that yes. cleansing, Jesus. Yes. That wonderful blood. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for the difference in being saved and born again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He had a little more cushy at the other of a more cushy, and the other of a more cushy, and he had a little more cushy and a little more cushy under the other of the eye. He had a little more cushy under the other of a more key under the under the key and a little more cool under the eye. I have said in times past and say now yet again I am with you I will never leave you I will never forsake you you are mine you are my precious children and I appreciate your obedience for not many would do the things that you do for I see the things in secret saith the Lord yea I know your heart and I know your very actions, saith the Lord, and I am watching over you to keep you in all your ways, saith the Lord. So look to me, look to me, for I am your Savior. I am the one that keeps you in the palm of my hand, and no man plucks you out, for I love you, and I will keep you. Look to me, and yes, saith the Lord, Time is coming, and it's coming soon, and you will see things fulfilled that you have been believing for. Yea, have I not spoken it? And it will happen. It will happen, as I say, because I am Lord of all. So keep looking unto me, and keep believing in what I say, and you will see these things come to pass in your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank
the trunk, your trunk has to be sure it's steady as well because that's where your, your knowledge starts to come in and your wisdom, it's, that's where it builds. That's where you, where you get your knowledge and your, your teaching, your wisdom. And then it grows out and it blooms. And once it starts to bloom and then the fruit comes. But that's not always just overnight. Oh no. Just because things don't go exactly how we see it to be fit doesn't mean it's not going to happen. So we as, as human beings have to learn not to start doubting ourselves because we think, oh, but that's what, I, I, how did I miss it, Lord? I'm pretty sure that's what you said. But he just said that those are the things that I've said that are going to come to pass. Yes. And like I said, just because we have a picture in our head doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. Right. Because God knows the perfect timing when things are going to happen. And sometimes if you rush too much, just like when you're building the house, if you rush too much, sometimes there's things missed. Sometimes your foundation isn't poured right if you try to rush it. And then when the house is built on top of it, the foundation starts to crack. You know, we were in that place nine months. watching my video may not have heard everything uh, I know it's kind of loud we have some fans going <laughs> and all but um, <clears throat> the Lord's working with us right now and he's he's speaking with us and he's moving in this service and I know you can feel it through the through the video but um, just know that God is moving on our behalf amen and he blesses his children and he's watching out for his children hallelujah so just keep the faith with us amen keep us in your prayers but keep the faith with us that god is going to do what he said he's going to do because we believe it and i want you to believe it too amen hallelujah well we're going to get into the word right now and uh let me give these spectacles back to their rightful owner mike could i read this song here a minute yeah please brother dennis is going to read from Psalms. Psalms uh, 115. And just speak up Not so they can hear you on that microphone. <clears throat> it says, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but uh, but the glory... Oh, wait a minute. This, I think I got changed on the, the wind blew my... Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, but to your name give glory, because you uh, of your truth. Why should the Gentiles say, "So where is is thy God?" But but our God is in heaven. He does he does what he pleases. It, uh, the idols and the silver and the gold, the work of man's hand. They have mouths, but they do not speak. The eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Nose, they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet, they have, they have, but they do not walk. Nor do uh, they matter. Uh, do they mutter through their throat? Those who make them are like them. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Those who make them are like the, like the idols here. Mm. So I thought I'd read that. And if it goes on, when I want you to go ahead and give the word. I've just seen that. And I thought that. Said, so is everyone who, who trusts in, in them. 
O Israel, trust in the Lord. He that helpeth uh, their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He that help, he that help uh, uh, their, uh, their shield. He and you fear the Lord, trust the Lord, and and he is help and their shield. And I'll just go on from there. I don't want to go. I just thought that was really good, especially the eighth verse. Those who make them are just like them. And people do that. They make uh, idols out of, of things. It can be my, you know, and but uh, those that do it just like the idols. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Good is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me in the New Testament to the book of Romans. Praise the Lamb of God. Romans 5. Romans chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we've talked a little bit in the times past about Abraham and, and the blessings of Abraham and what Abraham went through. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit more about Abraham in the New Testament. Praise God. Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, reads, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Did you hear that? If Abraham were justified by works, and we know the things that Abraham did. We know uh, one thing that, that he did. The first thing in obedience was he left his, his father's house. He said, get you up Amen. out of this land, and I will show you where to go. I'm going to show you the promised land. So first off, we know that Abraham obeyed in the fact that he got him his wife, his nephew that he was taking care of, and left and went out, not even knowing where he was going. Amen. And then we seen where um, he he got he was in battles and became victorious in battles. We seen where the promised child Isaac was born, and the Lord told him, "I want you to take Isaac and offer him as a sacrifice unto me." And he went up and obeyed and was going to sacrifice. And yet God provided a lamb. And this is what Abraham told his son, that God will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Amen. Uh, we see many things that he'd done. We see where he went into the battle uh, with the kings when they came and took his nephew Lot and his family as captive. And he went in. Uh, him and I believe it was was it 318 uh, it was 300 and something uh, of his trained servants to go in to battle and to uh, win back uh, his family to go in and release the captives and he became victorious we see where Abraham met Melchizedek on the way back home from that battle and gave him tithes of all he didn't, he didn't keep anything for himself so that kings would make him rich, but he, he gave him tithes and he let the people have what they had eaten and that was it. Amen. So we see these things that Abraham did, hallelujah, in acts of obedience and the works that he did. And the Bible says right here that if Abraham were justified by works, he whereof he had whereof to glory so he could have gloried in the works that he did is that right yeah he yes could he could because he did many mighty works but not before god see god's not impressed by our works he's impressed by what our obedience faith Yes, our faith and obedience. But 
he says here, verse 3, What saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. How did Abraham believe God? Very first off, we just mentioned how when the Lord spoke to Abraham, Abraham got his wife and, and his nephew and left not even knowing where he was going. He just got up and left because God said, get out of this place. Number one. So he obeyed, yes. But the reason he obeyed was because he believed. Yes. He believed God, and that was counted to him for righteousness. Now, I'm helping somebody out there today because a lot of people think that you can just do good things and receive reward from God. That you can do good things to get into heaven. But God doesn't say if you do this many good deeds I'll let you into heaven. And that's not what the Bible says. Contrary to popular belief. Amen. It's believing God and doing what he said to do. So he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Did you hear that? He justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. To him that worketh not... But believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. You see, God will impute or give you righteousness or count you worthy without the works. Now, is that saying we shouldn't go out and work? That's not at all what we're saying. <laughs> you, and especially on your, on your everyday job, the Bible says this, if a man don't work, he doesn't eat. So if you're not working, you're going to be pretty hungry. So you have to work, but we're talking about working to attain salvation. Now, there's a difference between working to attain salvation and working out your salvation. Working to attain your salvation is vain. Well, amen. Working to attain your salvation is vain. You cannot work enough works to earn salvation. Amen. Well... <laughs> Not popular preaching, but it's still the truth. You cannot work enough good works to earn your way into heaven. When Jesus said this, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. We must go through Jesus. He is the door. Amen. That he's the gate. He's the one, he's the entryway into heaven. Jesus is the only way. And there's not enough good works that we can do to earn our way in there or to earn a privilege or to earn that special key, you know, to get into the, the city. No. We have to go through Jesus. And Amen. Jesus said, he, he said to Zacchaeus, he said, he said, you must be born again, didn't he? Didn't yes. he? Nicodemus, I think uh, Nicodemus, he said, that you must be born again. In John chapter 3, he said, you must be born again. And he said, how can, how can I be born again? Can you go enter again into your mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, you must be born of spirit and of water, amen, to be able to inherit this salvation. So he said, one, you've got to be born here, <laughs> of, uh, born on this planet, you know. you got to be born that's the water, but the Spirit is the born again. That's when you accept Him as your Savior, amen, and you say, Lord, I surrender my life, and, and uh, Romans here tells us that if we confess with our mouth 
Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we would be saved. So we are born of water, but we're born of spirit also when we do that and we make that confession, because with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It didn't say that by your works is made unto salvation, but confession is made unto salvation. But see, you're not going to confess it if you don't believe it, are you? Come on now. Yeah. You're not going to confess if you don't believe. So you need to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Well, this is still good. So even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying... Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Amen. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. No. We don't want the Lord to impute sin. We want him to impute righteousness. Amen. And we do that, listen, by faith. He says, verse 9, Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Or upon the uncircumcision uh, also. Now we just talked about this a little bit. The Jews and Gentiles. We talked about this. He said, for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Because he received the sign of circumcision... A seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Hallelujah. We call Abraham the father of faith. It's This is why. Because that he may be the father of all them that believe. Amen. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them uh, who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps that of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Amen. It was not through the law. See, the law says, well, you had to be circumcised. And the law says this and the law says that. But how many knows Abraham followed the law, the dictates of his heart, before the law was even given? Am I right about it? Yes, amen. The law hadn't been given yet, but yet in his heart he believed the righteousness of faith. That was the righteousness of faith was him believing in his heart. And he followed those things through the law, but the law is not what justified him. Faith justified him. Do you see that? It was not through the law. Now, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. How many knows that's true? If, if the law was to the heirs, uh, which are of the law be heirs, then faith is void. There's no... There, okay, let me break it down this way. Mama was Baptist, Daddy was Baptist, Grandma and Grandpa was Baptist, and by God, that makes me Baptist. <laughs> Mama and Daddy was Pentecost. Grandma and Grandpa was Pentecost. So my God, I'm Pentecostal too. Mama and Daddy was Catholic. Grandma and Grandpa was Catholic. So that makes me a Catholic. Does it? No. No. It doesn't. And that's exactly what he's saying here. That if they which are of the law be heirs that means just because they pass through that lineage and follow uh, after the law and those that follow the law if that makes them justified then faith is void 
What do you need faith for? Why would you need faith if you're in that lineage? And why would you even try to try to be saved if you weren't? Am I making sense today? I mean, if it was only for, for one line, and that through the law, I'm talking about one lineage line and calling it the law, if that was just one line, then all of those would be saved, and anybody outside of that could not be saved. That's what the Bible is saying here. But he's saying that's not the case. He's saying all who believe, all that have faith, are saved, can be saved. It's not just through the law. He's saying it's not just passing through the law that justifies you. It's your faith that justifies you. Well, hallelujah, because the law worketh wrath. Amen. For where no law is, there is no transgression. If we didn't have laws, if we didn't have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, private property laws, and, and you know, where, where people post no trespassing, then that means stay off of my property. Well, that's a law. That's a law that you are not to trespass on someone else's property. Did you know that? Yes. You're not to do that. And when you do that, you transgress the law. You break the law, don't you? But imagine if we didn't have that law. Imagine this. Imagine if you could not post a sign that said no trespassing, and then anybody and everybody could come on your property because there's no transgression of the law. Right? Right. But that's the reason we have laws. And we have laws for our safety and even for our freedoms yes for our freedoms that's why we have laws in effect but see if because the law worketh wrath for where no law is there's no transgression when the law works wrath if you have somebody trespass on your property you come in and let's say uh, a theft you know th stealing is against the law and they come on your property and they take some of your personal belongings and they take it back, they broke the law. They stole from you. But if there was no law, there wouldn't be any wrath. It'd be like, oh, okay, I guess you wanted it, so I got to give it to you. And yet that's how people try to live their lives today is by taking things that aren't theirs and there's laws in place, amen, to protect us and to keep us um, safe amen uh, but here he says where there's no law there's no transgression see we know now getting back to the spiritual aspect of this we transgress when we sin why because there is a law isn't there there's a law there's a law of life and death there's a law of sin amen and that's what happens. That's what we're born under when we're naturally born into this world. We're born into sin, and we just naturally sin because that's what people do. They sin until you decide not to sin and until you give your heart to the Lord. But even if you decide not to sin, if you don't give your heart to the Lord and turn over to the Lord, you're still not saved, you know? There's a whole lot of people in this world that obey the laws. They obey the speed limits. They obey not trespassing. They obey not stealing and things like that. And that just makes them a follower of the law. That makes them a law-abiding citizen. But it doesn't save them. It does not. That's where faith comes in. And believing that those things which God said are true. Therefore it is of faith, verse 16, that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope, 
that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body, uh, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded uh, what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Amen. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. That's good preaching scripture right there. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Because Abraham believed God. Amen. He believed God and God said, he, he told him, he said, I will make you the father of many nations. In fact, Abram, he changed his name to Abraham, meaning father of many nations. Amen. That's why God changed his name so that he could start seeing himself as the father of many nations. Hallelujah. And when God start, when God changes your name and when God does things to start showing you the promises that he's making you and you start enveloping this vision within, within your mind and it gets so real and it gets down in your heart that you just know that you know that you know that it's true. That's where faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You just know it in your knower that it is true. Amen. And God here told Abraham, I will make you the father of many nations. And so what did Abraham do? He, he against hope, believed in hope. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. Amen that he might become the father of many nations. See, there was some believing on Abraham's part that he had to do in order to receive the promise, right? Abraham had to believe God. And when Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. <clears throat> He says, now it was not written in verse 23 for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. So he says here, it wasn't written just for Abraham. It wasn't just something that God did in the in the back room with, with Abraham and he said Abraham I'm going to do this for you but don't tell anybody because I don't want anybody to know how good I am <laughs> no God didn't do any back, back room dealings amen he didn't write it to just Abraham but it was written for us for, uh, sake too. for, for us also it, to whom it shall be imputed it shall be imputed to us also, not just him, but to us, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Now, that's not saying if you believe in Jesus, is it? That's not what it said. If you believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Now get that, you know, people people say, well, Jesus was a man, he was a teacher, a prophet, you know, he was a good rabbi, but he wasn't Savior. Well, you have to believe Jesus is Lord, okay? Amen. But you've got to believe, in fact, the Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we have to believe in God. You don't just say, well, I believe there's a higher power. And I, believe in, I believe in the spirits in the sky. How many remembers that old song, Spirit in the Sky? Well, you, you know, it's not about the spirits in the sky. And it's not about, uh, you know, I believe in a higher power. Maybe there's aliens out there that are watching over us. And I believe, you know, I believe in nature and that we just, 
you know, evolved and that somehow the Big Bang happened and, and you know, we started out as a little tadpole and then we grew legs and, and arms and, and then, you know, we were able to stand up after billions of years. No. God created us in His image and in His likeness and that's how we're made. Amen. We didn't start out as tadpoles and frogs and monkeys and anything else that they tried to push Amen. down your throat. We did not evolve that way. Now, we might have evolved mentally. And, <laughs> and with our uh, IQs, we might have evolved some, maybe some more than others. But, uh, <laughs> Amen. but we did not evolve into this physical man from a tadpole. Amen. Come on now. We, that's just it's it's just not right I don't care what science tries to tell you and I'm not a scientist so I have no authority to tell you what scientists say but I do know what they try to teach that science says and it's just not true all of it but sometimes science is true and the true science will back the Word of God amen I'm just telling you the way it is yes amen true science will coincide with the Word of God so science is a real thing it is real and if it's true it will coincide with the Word hallelujah he said who was delivered this talk about Jesus uh, being delivered for our offenses and was raised again for his satisfaction right say it again brother. nope It says he was raised again for our justification. Amen. It wasn't for him that he did this. Jesus didn't need to prove to himself anything. He did this for our justification. So that we could be justified. <clears throat> what you say, well, Pastor Mike, how, how are we justified? By It says right here who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Well, how are we justified by his raising again? Because it gives us something we can believe in our heart. We yes. believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Amen. And he said, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's our justification. Amen. Are y'all getting this? Yes. It's not for Jesus' sake that he raised from the dead. Heck, he didn't even have to come to this world for his sake. Right. He didn't have to come and be born in, uh, of a virgin in a, uh, and, uh, you know, in, in a barn. He didn't have to do that for his own sake and, you know, saying, well, I'm just going to humble myself because, you know, I feel it's going to do me good. I, I think it's going to be a time of refreshing for myself. No. He did that for our justification. Because if there had been no raising of the dead, there would be no justification. There wouldn't be. There'd be no... Uh, the Bible says this, if there was no shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. Amen. So blood had to be shed for the remission. Now what is remission? Remission is going back. You know, you, 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 you hear of, of uh, cancer being in remission. Well, it means that cancer had gone forward, okay, and that it was progressing or in progression. But then whenever whatever happened, whether it's a miracle or, or a, a treatment, medical treatments or whatever the case be, it got in remission. It means that it starts going backwards in remission. See, it, it's the, well, it's like this. What do we call the people that we send out, whether it's across this land or across the sea in other nations, what do we call the people that we send out and they go and preach the gospel? Mission areas. It's their mission because they were sent out. They were to progress something. They were to progress the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're missionaries. So a mission means it's to go forth and to spread. But remission is the calling back of. 
and without the shedding of blood. And God gave us that example way back in the Garden of Eden, when when man trans when Adam and Eve transgressed uh, God's law, and they ate of the fruit uh, of the tree of of, the, of knowledge and of good and evil. When they did that, and they went, and because the Bible says, then were their eyes open. It didn't mean they were blind walking about before. It means that their spiritual eyes were open, that they knew that they had sinned. Amen. They Amen. knew they had sinned, and then the Bible says that they knew that they were naked, and they were ashamed. They were afraid. Amen. They they were naked, and the Bible says they went and hid themselves when God came down to talk to Adam, and God said, Hey, Adam, where are you at? And God knew exactly where he was, but he was calling out. Why? Because he had to confess, Here I am. See, God even helped Adam way back then, number one, with confession, because we have to confess. How many's ever heard confession is good for the soul? Amen. That's not what the Bible says, but the Bible does say to confess your sins. Amen. And to confess your faults one to another. He says that, and that's how you grow. That's the way you're held accountable. You know, these things, but God even made a way for Adam back then. He said, Adam, where you at? And he said, I'm here, and I heard your voice, and I was scared because I was naked. And then God said, well, who told you you were naked? God already knew who told him he was naked. But Adam had to confess it, didn't he? And he said, well, that woman you gave me and the serpent. And they, you know, everybody's blaming each Good other. Job. Amen? Yeah. And the Bible says that him and Eve had so fig leaves together and they, they made themselves aprons and covered themselves and everything so that they wouldn't be naked. But see, it wasn't just the fact of, you know, you think, well, you get naked and get in the shower. That's, you know, that's not just the nakedness that they had. There was a lot more to it than just what we think of being naked. You know, they, they became, uh, what do you call that? Uh, when, when, Disease and things like that is able to come on you. Uh, vulnerable. vulnerable, yes, thank you. The vulnerable to many, many things now because of their eyes being open. You see, that was the nakedness that they had. They, the vulnerability that they had uh, to sickness and to disease and to death. And they were trying to cover themselves from that vulnerableness. Right? That, but what happened? God took and there and they sacrificed an animal, and He made them uh, coats with the furs of these animals, right, to cover them. Okay, so that they wouldn't be as vulnerable. But the main thing is, there was blood shed in the garden to cover them. To cover them. Why did they need covered? Because they had sin. And they had sin, and, and then what did this say? Back up here in verse <clears throat> in verse seven. This is or verse six. Even as David also describes blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, "Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered." But see, this is why. Jesus had to come. This is why Jesus had to spill his blood. It was not for his health. It wasn't for his ego. But it was for our justification. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's why God sent his son to do this, because he loved you and he loved me. Amen. And he gave his son, the perfect spotless lamb of God, as a sacrifice for our justification. Jesus had to shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Well, amen. That's good, Pastor Mike. I don't care who says no. But look what Abraham did. 
Abraham, seeing these things afar off, and the Bible says that Abraham looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker was God. Abraham believed so much, he believed so much in his heart, that God was sending him to a place, to a city, which had foundations, whose builder and maker was God. How many knows there is a city? Yes, amen. That has foundations. Amen. Whose builder and maker is God. Yes. Amen. We know it is heaven. <laughs> and one day we'll attain that. Yes. But Hallelujah. Abraham believed it so much that he left his father's house and his kindred and he took his wife and his nephew and they just left without even knowing where he was going because he believed God was going to show him. Yes. Man, this is good stuff. Uh -huh. He believed so much that it was so much inside him that he just knew that he knew in his knower, I'm finding that city. Amen. And Abraham died, and many of these people died without inheriting the promise. The Bible says that without even attaining that promise, but they believed so much in it that they lived their lives according to that vision that God had given them. So much so that when Abraham died and Jesus was talking about him, he said the place called paradise was Abraham's bosom. It's in the heart of Abraham. That's where your bosom is, isn't it? In your, it's, it's where your heart is. And that's where Abraham's heart was because he believed so much in that place that people would go to the heart of Abraham. Well, amen. Yes. That's where they went until Jesus came and made that sacrificial uh, offering of himself unto God. And when he did that, the Bible says that he went down and he preached to the captives. They were captives. Why were they captives? Because that's the only place they could go. They didn't they they couldn't go to heaven yet. Why? Because there was no plan of salvation for them that they could attain that. So they went down there and he preached to them, and when they accepted Jesus Christ the Messiah, they believed on him, and then what happened? They were taken to heaven out of Abraham's bosom. So no longer is paradise or Abraham's bosom occupied. Amen. Jesus led captivity captive. <coughs> Amen. He took them and those that, that were putting people in captivity, those that, well, I'll put it this way, the devil that holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and he was saying, aha, I got the keys. Aha, I'm the one that makes people scared to die. Aha, I'm the one that does this. See, that's what it was, was the fear of death because they didn't know. See, but we know. We've got the book. There's no, no need to be fearful because the, Paul wrote this way, to be absent in body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. So we Amen. know. We have a knowing. We know what happened. See, but they didn't know. They didn't have the written book like we've got. So he went and he took them to heaven. And that was for our justification. Amen? Hallelujah. But Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. And today, folks, I want to ask you, do you believe God? Do you believe God so much? Do you believe that what God told you is, is, is going to happen. Do you believe that, that his promises are true? The word of God is, is true, and it's yes and amen. All right? That's, that's his word. And he'll, he gives us this blessed hope. If we believe, we just read that, how Christ came and gave his life, and it's to, uh, this was written for us, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Amen? Amen. That's going to be imputed to us. That righteousness which is of faith will be imputed to us if we believe on him that raised Christ up from the Lord. For I am persuaded. Amen. I fully believe 
that he, huh, that what I've committed to him against that day, he is able to keep that, amen, and keep it safe, that he will keep me secure, that we even heard that earlier today in, in, the, in the message of tongues and, and interpretation, that he has us in his hand, and that no man can pluck us out. Hallelujah. So do you believe that? Yes. Are you persuaded? Do you know it in your knower? Yes. If not, there's some things that you need to do. But I've given you the word. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. You've heard the word of God. So I have put faith out there. It is up to you what you do with that faith. But see, faith, Jesus said this in Mark, that the sower sows the word, and we go out and we sow that word. What kind of soil is your heart? Are you receiving that seed of faith that it may grow and take root and so that you can start seeing that vision that God has given to you and for your life? Will you run with it? Will you run with that vision? Will you do the things that the Lord said to do? Amen. Will you believe like faithful Abraham did and believe in hope even when there seems to be no hope? Even against hope, he believed in hope. And it was imputed to him for righteousness. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for being true to your word. I thank you for giving us the example of faithful Abraham in your word to let us know that we can live by faith. We don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. And Lord, we know that we must live by our faith. So Lord, as your word has gone out, it is producing faith. I know it is. Because your word says that that's what it does. And Lord, I pray that the people would receive this faith in their hearts and in their lives. If there's a one that does not know you, Lord, I pray that you would reach out to them. Make yourself known. That they can come into the ark of safety of salvation. Help us, O oh Lord, to do your will and to live according to your commandments and your statutes. Let us put the words of you in our hearts and write them upon the tablet of our heart. Let us follow after your word and to do what your word says. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Now, if someone doesn't know the Lord and they'd like to know the Lord, make him your Savior, just say, Father God, I thank you for your word, and I thank you that I've heard your word, and now, Lord, I believe, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I confess to you, Lord, my sins and the things that I've done not pleasing to you and I ask that you cleanse me of those sins take them away cover me Lord with the blood of Jesus and thank you for saving me in Jesus name amen and just go on ahead and, and receive the Holy Ghost while you're at it and if, if you'd like to be baptized in the Holy Ghost you ought to be saved first Save that, say that prayer, back the video up, go say that prayer, amen, and, and then just come and say, Lord, baptize me with the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Give this to me, I pray, Lord, for I seek you, I seek your face, and I seek your spirit, I seek your ways, and I want to know you more. I want to know you on an intimate level, Lord, that you I know that you know me and I want to know you just as well. So baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire 
And then, as you're praying, and you're meditating, and you're praying, and you're meditating, and you may be hearing this these words or this voice start rising up within you that just really wants to come out, let him out. Amen. Just let him talk through you and just start speaking. Speak in tongues. Some people start with a, uh, just, just noises and groanings and moanings and things like that. Go ahead. Let, let the Spirit come out. Let him use you. Because guess what? We need to be ambassadors for him. Hallelujah. We need to let the Holy Spirit move. So just ask him to do that thing and then just obey when he does. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I appreciate you all. I appreciate everybody that's here today in person and those joining us by video. I love you guys and appreciate you. Uh, keep believing with us. Uh, I'm believing we're going to um, have a have a facility soon. Amen. Yeah. That we're going to be getting a place where we can uh, meet and have even more people join with us. Amen. Amen. I see growth. Hallelujah. I I'm seeing growth even by the end of this year. I see it. I see it happening. And I see things coming to pass that God has promised. I see these things unfolding before our eyes. And we may think that this is a setback, but nay, this is not a setback. This is just a time of regrouping. This is a time of regrouping. And this is a time of regrouping because the troops are gathering together. The troops are gathering together and God is calling his body back. God is putting his body fitly joined together where he wants them. And it is a regrouping of his body. So fear not, neither be dismayed, for the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is doing this. Hallelujah. Yes, Yes, we will bring them in. We will bring them in to you. Yes. As you bring them to us, we bring them to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We honor you, Father. We honor you, Lord. There is none greater than you. There is none greater than you. There is none above you. For you are truly the Lord. The Master. Yes. The Master. We honor you, Lord. We honor you with the praises of our lips and the thankfulness of our hearts. We honor you. We honor you, Lord, with our substance and with our very being, Lord, we honor you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Your name be magnified in all the earth. You are holy. You are worthy of our praise. You are magnificent, O oh Lord. There is none like you. Thank you. the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. Well, amen. There's uh, information there in the description if you'd like to send your tithe offerings or if you have a prayer request, how to get a hold of us. Believe with us, amen, that uh, God's word is coming to pass. Amen. 
we're even seeing the words that they spoke that Jesus spoke in in the word coming to pass in this day and uh, we need to be ready amen we need to be ready so believe with us hallelujah amen work with us pray with us believe with us because good things are on the horizon for those that believe amen, amen. well praise God until next time this is Pastor Mike reminding you hey, I love you God loves you and Jesus is Lord. Amen.